Today, I'm going to read you The Great Castle of Marsh Mango. It was my very first picture book. And this hat was a present when we had a big party to celebrate. And I've still got it. The day I was five, I went to the fair and I met my granddaddy for the very first time. He's the funniest wee man you've ever seen. He had a yellow top hat on, a bit like this, a plum coloured jacket, rainbow breeches, polka dot socks, bright silver boots and a white, white beard reaching all the way down to the golden buckle on his belt. Well, he looked a bit like this. Hello, young man, said he. Would you like to come and stay with me in the great castle of Marsh Mangle for the night? I looked at Mummy, and she was smiling. Yes, sir, I said. I'd like it very much. Up a high hill we walked and down into a low valley, off the hard road and onto the soft, till we came to a place where the trees were growing both sides of the lane and over the top, through the tunnel, and out of the tunnel we went till the path turned left and we came to a clearing. That's the picture in the book. And look, behind me is the same picture on my wall, painted by the illustrator Paul Hess. There in front of us was a little thatched cottage. What do you call that, young man? said my granddaddy. How do you mean, sir, said I. Well, what sort of a name would you give to that thing in front of you? Oh, the house, or the home, or whatever you say, sir, said I. You wouldn't be right there, said he, laughing. Sure, that's the great castle of Marsh Mangle. He took a big key out of his pocket, opened the door, went in and threw some wood on the fire. And what would you call this young man, said he? That's the flame, or the fire, or whatever you say, sir, said I. Indeed not, said he, it's smolder glow. The next thing, a cat came in and stretched out by the fire. So what about that wee scrap, said my granddaddy, what would you call her? Uh, so she's a kitten, or a cat, or whatever you say, sir, said I, stroking her head. No, no, he said, that's pig. Pocket. Well, <clears throat> if nothing around here has a name that I know, said I. What do I call you, sir? Oh, my name's Hickory Horseradish, said he. And he picked up the kettle to make some tea. What's this coming out of the tap, young man, said he. It's the water, the rain, or whatever you say, sir, said I. Not at all, said he. It's Saga Drop. That's what it is. Saga Drop. He took off his silver boots, tired of walking the whole day long. Now, what would you call these young men, said he? Mm. Your wellies, your waders, whatever you say, sir, said I. Not the bit of it, said he, they're my sandcastle stompers. And what about this, he said, knocking the dust off his topper. Uh, your helmet, your hat, or whatever you say, sir. Wrong again, said he. That's my brain box banana. Brain box banana. Now, he said, while we wait for our supper, I'll show you where to sleep. So what would you call this then, said he, on the way up? Mm, the steps or the stairs or whatever you say, sir. Ah, no, he said, that's the wooden hill. He threw open the door on my lovely wee bed. And what would you call that, young man, said he? It's the bed, or the bunk, or whatever you say, sir, said I. It's not indeed, said he. Sure, it's the forty-wink cockpit. We ate our supper, milked the cow, locked the door, and went off to sleep. In the middle of the night, I crept down for a drink. And I saw a terrible thing. I ran to his door. I knocked and knocked. What's wrong, young man, said he. 
Hickory horse radish and I. Rise up from your forty wing cock, but put on your sound castle, stop with on your brain box banana, and come down the wooden hill. Pickpocket's got a smolder glow in his tail, and if we don't get some song up quick, the great castle of Marshmallow will be burnt to the ground. So out he flies from his forty wing cockpit, bang, springs into his sand castle stumpers, bangs his brain box banana on his head, and down the wooden hill as fast as his feet will carry him. Sure enough, there's poor wee pickpocket running in rings around the room, shrieking, meow! His tail's on fire. Hickory Horseradish grabs a jug of soggy drop and pours it over pickpocket's tail. With a shishin' and a shushin', the smolder glow goes out and the great castle of Marshmangle is saved. Hooray! The next morning, it's my mummy's turn to come knocking on the door. How did you like staying in the great castle of Marshmangle? She said, smiling. I bet it's quiet compared to the town. Not so quiet, said I. Not so quiet at all. Can I come and stay with my granddaddy again? Mommy looked at Hickory, and Hickory looked at me. Yes, Michael, they said together. You can, indeed. <laughs>